Good morning to you. Oh, <clears throat> good morning to all brothers and sisters. After all the waiting and uh, watching for the signs and the anticipation and excitement, this is the moment. Emmanuel, God is with us. Amen. Let's pray. We have been preparing for the coming of Jesus. Advent is such a very busy time with cards to send, presents to buy, food to prepare, carols to sing. Forgive us, Lord. We've been so caught up with the holy, holy of Christmas activity that our energy and enthusiasm has often been subbed up and has left us with little desire to do more. But now is the moment and the day is upon us. And we are here with renewed energy, ready to celebrate your birth, standing in wonder with the shepherds, kneeling in adoration by the Maj and singing with all the company of heaven. Father, we just want to thank you. Be with us as we start this service. Continue to bless us, Father. In your name I pray. Amen. Uh, our Bible reading for today comes from the book of uh, Luke, uh, chapter 2, verses 41 to 51. I would ask you, Brother Ben to come and do the reading of the Word of God. Praise God, and it's great to be here with you guys again and being able to read the Word of God. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas Day yesterday and that you were all blessed. And I pray that uh, it'll, you'll keep, keep uh, working towards uh, these happy times in your families for the next year. As uh, Johnson mentioned... I'll read from Luke chapter 2, 41 to 51. And it's about Jesus speaking with the religious leader, teachers. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the festival according to the custom. After the festival was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they travelled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. When you were searching for me, he, why were you searching for me? He asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. This is the word of the Lord for this week. And I can't wait to hear what Johnson's got to say. I encourage you to go back through past YouTubes, especially for the Advent and everything, and uh, check them out. They're really great. So praise God and we'll get Johnson back. I'm back again. And uh, my theme this uh, morning is on Don't Miss Jesus in Christmas. Jesus is the reason for the season. Don't miss Jesus in Christmas. Jesus is the reason for the season. Luke is the only gospel writer who gives us a peek into the childhood of Jesus. Luke the physician is an analytical and an observer of life. Biblical historians believe that Luke had much of his research with first-hand observers of the life, death and resurrection of Jesus. Not being an apostle or having first-person knowledge, he relied on, uh, upon others. One of those was Mary, the mother of Jesus. Someone said that Jesus' child is like a walled garden, the inside of which no one has seen. Luke plucked one flower from inside that garden and gave it to us to read and contemplate. That is what Bruce Lasson communicator's commentary says. So let's examine the background of this scripture passage. First, we read that the nuclear family of Jesus 
of Joseph, Mary, and Jesus traveled to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover festival. Jewish rabbinical law required every male to go to three annual festivals in a year. So when that was established, it was much easier for the men to attend but two, but time and distance had eroded that possibility. So the Jews were now scattered over many miles in the Roman Empire so that most attended only one of the festivals a year. The second thing is the festival that the family attended traditional was the Passover festival, a feast festival. So this festival was a seven-day event celebrating the deliverance that God gave to the Israelites when Moses led them to out of Egypt. So the Passover was the tenth plague visited upon the Egyptians by God when the death angel passed through the land. So Moses was told that blood from a lamp was to be placed on the doorpost of the houses of the land and the angel would pass over them and their firstborn would live. So it is that last plague that finally convinced Pharaoh to allow the Israelites to leave Egypt. So the Israelites would continue to celebrate this festival of the Exodus from slavery until very day. 2,000 years ago, Jesus and his family would remember the freedom their ancestors received. Third, Luke told us that Jesus was 12 years old. This story occurred one year before Jesus as Bar Misiva. According to Jewish law, a boy becomes an adult at age 13. That means he becomes accountable for his own actions or obligated to the ritual responsibilities of Jewish life. We discover through our reading that Jesus is already preparing himself for this important event in his life when he's in the temple, listening and asking questions of the religious scholars. So the question is, what can we learn from today's scripture passage? One thing is that Jesus' parents, like most devout Jews, went to Jerusalem each year. There is a habit of going to Jerusalem each year. Jesus' family had the right priorities. Families that establish regular habits of worship are less likely to have their spiritual life deflected by alternative attractions. So keep worship on top of your family's agenda. Putting God first is a great example to children who quickly learn what parents can care about by observing how they plan and spend their time. So the first thing we must be careful not to miss Jesus. The festival is over and the family is headed home to Nazareth. They are not a threesome like we would think today. The Jews of that time lived in extended families and for any travel to festival, they walked together as a whole caravan of people, friends and families, men and women separately. And usually, usually the younger children would walk with moms at the front of the caravans, but older children could go either direction between two groups. So the kids belong to everybody. This lessens the threat from thieves and other dangerous situations along the road. It also gave time for fellowship. As one commentator observed, the caravan could be joined by other groups of travelers from neighboring towns to form a great company of people moving from the foothills and deserts of the area. Many thought Jesus was probably Mary thought Jesus was probably with Joseph, and Joseph thought Jesus was with Mary. So when they stopped for the night, they met together. Mary probably was the first to ask, where is Jesus? Joseph replied, isn't he with you? A frantic search began and they found that no one had seen him since they left that morning. Luke 2, 46 says that they looked for Jesus for three days. As Bruce Larson observes, it seems more logical to assume it took one day for the journey away from Jerusalem. One day to return back to the city and one day to search for the boy. So these parents didn't abandon Jesus. It was an unfortunate mistake. They absolutely loved their son. Jesus may have been out of sight for a while from his parents, but never out of their hearts. They did everything to find him. So if you are missing Jesus, look for him. You need to look for him. Abandon all else until you find Jesus. Leave everything that you are doing until you find Jesus. You can find him. He is at the edge of your heart, waiting to come in today. 
We must be careful to look for and find Jesus. Look to 45 and 46. Jeremiah 29, 18 says, You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. So you need to seek, look for Jesus. You need to seek Jesus. After returning to Jerusalem, those parents looked frantically asking anybody and everybody would listen if they'd seen Jesus. That's our goal. Seeking Jesus, finding Jesus. How do I seek God? Isaiah 55, verse 6 and 9 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. So we need to seek Jesus. By seeking calmness and serenity, we are also seeking Jesus. We live in a chaotic and frightening world full of violence, mired by tumor and conflict, with diseases. Almost daily we see the aftermath of hatred, racism and terror. It would be easy for us to hide from it or to fret over it, to be in constant state of fear. Only God can bring peaceful, calm and clear view when everything around us is swelling out of control. So the prophet Isaiah said it precisely. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Because he trusts in you, Isaiah 26, verse 3. So the New Testament writer quoted Jesus when he said, Peace I live with you, peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let you be afraid, on John 14, verse 27. So by seeking purity of desire and heart, we are also seeking Jesus. So the beat of our heart ought to be like Jesus. We need to allow his Holy Spirit to fill us and his love to overwhelm us. I want to act like Jesus, live as close to Jesus as possible, and seek his heart's desire for me. So, by seeking a spirit of cheerfulness and positive outlook, you need to be cheerful. Always, you are seeking Jesus. Listen to what God's word says in Philippians 4 verse 8. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, Whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent and praiseworthy, think about such things. Proverbs 4 verse 6, do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you. Love her and she will watch over you. So you need to seek the things that are good. And we read in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. And Matthew 14, verse 27 says, be of good cheer. So we need to be cheerful. We need to seek the positive outlook in everything. Also, we need by seeking a life of prayer, we are also seeking Jesus. Richard Baxter wrote, prayer must be carried out as work as much as preaching. He preached not hardly to his people that will not pray for them. Prayer must be, precede all that ministers and lay persons do in the church. So we need to be praying all the time. That's how we seek Jesus. That includes teaching, serving on boards and communities, evangelizing and giving, and more and more. So how do I find Jesus? It is simple. Ask him to come into your life. Ask him to come into your life. Confess your need of him, that your sinfulness is more than you can handle. Thank him for his willingness to forgive your sins. Serve him with all your heart. Revelation 3, verse 20 says, Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. So he, he, Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart right now. He's knocking. If you only you can open, he can come in. So maybe you are present to say, How do I seek Jesus? How do I find Jesus? He's knocking at the door of your heart. If you listen, and you are able to open, you will come in. We must be careful to live an obedient life when you are a Christian. We compartmentalize our life. Religion is for Sunday. We only think about Christianity on a Sunday. When after the service, we move out, we forget about everything. We forget about the Bible. We forget about the prayers. We forget about who we are. What we do with the rest of the week is ours. It's our ways, our actions, and money. Is that truth is that every compartment of our life is Christ's. Everything that you do belongs to Christ. Your life 
is all surrounded by the love of Jesus. Jesus said, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. Anyone who loves him will obey my teaching. My father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. In John 14 verse 21. We must be fully committed to obeying Jesus 100% of our lives. 100% of our lives. Do not may listen to the word. No. So deceive yourself. Do what he says. Do what the word of God says. James 1 verse 22 says that. Do not just may listen. We need to be imitators of Jesus. We need to follow what the scriptures say. It is only the Bible that guides us in everything that we do. So, brothers and sisters, I just want to urge you that when we hear the word of God, we need to follow what the word of God says. And that is the ultimate thing that we are called to do. Hang on to the principles we were taught by Jesus in this family today. Remember that the essence of Christian living is holiness. As John Wesley said, is simplicity and purity. One design, one desire, entire devotion to God. You need to put your life to entire devotion to God. That's seeking Jesus Christ. So your life is only and only rooted in the word of God. Nothing but the word of God. Don't listen to all these philosophies. Don't listen to all these psychologies. But your life is rooted in the word of God. And that is the only one that brings salvation to your life. May the good Lord help you as you think upon these ways. May God help you as you understand what God wants you. As I said, don't miss Jesus Christ in Christmas. Jesus is the reason for the season. God bless you in Jesus' name. Let us, let us pray. Jesus, child of the creed, with Mary who gave birth to you, with Joseph who protected you, with the people of Nazareth who welcomed you, with the temple teachers, who mothered at you with our brothers and sisters throughout the world. We welcome you. Jesus, Savior of the world, welcome you. We don't want to miss you. At any time, at any given moment, we always want to be with you. May you continue to abide in our hearts in everything that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. I would want to ask you, brothers, that is uh, always good and right to observe our thanksgiving time of thanking God for looking after us and keeping us to this day. So I would urge you to take your offering, thanksgiving offering, as we thank God for what God has done. Then I will pray for it. Okay, let, let me pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for the life you've given us. Father, we know that sometimes we miss you. In the business of life, we forget who you are. We only sometimes think of worshiping you and coming to you on Sunday. And all the other six days, sometimes we leave you away from us. That's missing Jesus. Father, we pray that you continue to bless us with these offerings that you have given us. Realizing that without you, we can't do anything. Father, we pray for these offerings that they be a blessing to those who receive it at the end. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let's receive grace. Go out beyond comfort of what you know to explore and discover new things. Don't be afraid of change, of seeing things differently, because God travels with you. Go, and God will go with you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen. God bless you all.